नमस्ते आई जे वी एन नितिका सटवाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन ज्योति विद्यापीठ विमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी इज हेयर टू डिलीवर द लेक्चर ऑन कोर्स डिस्पर्जन दिस यूनिट इज इन फिजिकल फार्मास्यूटिक सेकेंड विच इज थर्ड यूनिट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग टाइप ऑफ इमर्शन एंड दिस इज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ प्रीवियस टू लेक्चर of course dispersion now what are the factors that affect the type of emulsion type of emulsifying agent that is used which affects the type of emulsion type of emulsion is a function of relative solubility of emulsifying agent phase volume ratio this determines the relative number of droplets formed and hence the probability of number of collision the greater the number of droplets greater is the chance of collision viscosity of each phase also alter the type of emulsion and increase in viscosity of a phase helps in making that phase the external phase if the viscosity of a phase increases then that will call the external phase if the viscosity of oil increases and water viscosity is less then the oil will be become the external phase and if the water viscosity is higher then the water will be, uh, water will become external phase and oil will become internal phase okay now what are the extemporaneous methods for preparation of emulsion extemporaneous means what which we prepare in lab It means lab scale so what are these methods first one is trituration method which uh, also divided in dry gum method and wet gum method wet gum method and dry gum method both are under trituration method this is the initial and first method for preparing uh, an emulsion in lab scale and the other method is bottle method but uh, for dry in dry gum method and wet gum method we can't use volatile oil because they evaporate very fastly so for dry uh, for uh, we, uh, volatile oils we use what bottle method or uh, bottle method also can be called as forbes bottle method in which we use what volatile oil in dry gum method the water quantity is lesser because it also refers to dry right in but in wet gum method the uh, amount of water will be higher okay now uh, in emul what are the emulsifying techniques to prepare emulsion in large scale the previous ones are lab scale methods but if we are discussing about large scale methods large scale production methods for emulsions then it will be uh, energy may be supplied in the form of heat so by heat process we can prepare emulsion the first one is emulsification by vaporization this process also known as condensation and second method is emulsification by changing temperature this method is also known as phase inversion technique and the third one is low energy emulsification method in which there will be careful control of variables like emulsification temperature mixing time it can it can be controlled and mixing intensity it should be controlled amount of external phase which are, we are employing during the emulsification step and the method of blending these all will be maintained at a level right now homogenization and agitation method is there for homogen homogenization and agitation there are many equipments used for example first one is mechanical stirrer mechanical stirrer is used to prepare various things uh, for example we prepare carbopol gel in b farm first year in the laboratory so uh, mechanical stirrer used for many uh, various preparations right so here emulsion can be prepared by mechanical stirrer in which mechanical shear is provided at really high speed right and the other method is propeller type mixers where propellers are there to uh, mix the emulsions in very high speed there are what propellers so there are two types of mixers in propeller type mixers they are 
turbine mixture and homogenizer right now the other method is colloidal mills where colloidal mill is provided and in which emulsions are prepared and the other method is ultrasonifiers ultrasonifiers is an uh, equipment in which there is inlet other uh, and the second part is nozzle by which the um, substances are gone through and the other step is vibrating blade where the emulsions are prepared by vibration and there is an outlet from where the emulsion can be collected now what are the preservation methods of emulsion how we can prepare this how we can preserve these emulsion now we prepare the emulsion now the step uh, comes preservation preservation is very important for emulsions right because emulsion can be separated in two phases because they are biphasic systems for biphasic system the most important step is its prevention its preservation by microbial growth other environmental factors we have to prepare uh, preserve the emulsion some ingredients of emulsion promote growth of microorganism by providing nutrients because emulsions are liquid dosage form so attack of microbes can be higher in this chance because in solid uh, dosage form the chances of microbial growth are lesser so there is a need to preserve the emulsion okay now for example bacteria feed bacteria feed on non ionic and ionic surfactant glycerin and emulsifying agent uh, and causes deterioration of emulsion the emulsion will be deteriorate and there will be of no use uh, oil arachis oil promote growth of asparagus rhizopus while liquid paraffin promote growth of some brucitizes uh, um, uh, for those for these type of reasons emulsion should be formulated with a preservative we have to add a preservative in it contamination of emulsion could be due to various reasons for example contaminated emulsion deionized water bacteria growth in resin beds equipment that are contaminated by bacteria poorly closed containers these can uh, these can be the source of bacterial growth now preparation of emulsions therefore requires use of high quality ingredients and clean equipment also water must be boiled and cooled before use because water can also be affected by the bacteria so it is must to boil the water previously before its use immediately after use of emulsion the container must be closed using a close fitting closer to um, so there can be uh, there can be um, no risk of penetrating the bacteria in the emulsion emulsion for parenteral use must be absolutely sterile although it is not always necessary to achieve sterile condition and in an emulsion for oral or topical use it is essential that emulsions are formulated to resist microbial attack for the reason given above the growth of microorganism brings about certain undesirable changes in the properties of emulsion instability include phase separation by this we can ensure oh, the our emulsion is deteriorated because if phase separated then emulsion is of no use if the biphasic system changes into a single single phase then it will be of no use okay if discoloration occurs then we know the uh, microbial growth occurs right and other is uh, other example is gas odor formation if there is a bad odor that is uh, coming from uh, an emulsion then it ensures that the emulsion is deteriorated and changes in rheological properties what are rheological properties 
the flow properties and other things are con um, came under rheological properties if its flow property changes then we know the preparation is deteriorated so we can't use that preparation because its shelf life is deteriorated right there is one major problem encountered in adding a preservative to an emulsion and this is to get adequate concentration in aqueous phase due to partition it should be remembered that emulsions are heterogeneous system and therefore a preservative tends to partition between oil in aqueous phase but bacteria grow in aqueous phase only because oils are uh, uh, don't get the chances to uh, to um, bacterial growth hence if a preservative is partitioned strongly in the oil phase it is useless so it should be uh, the, um, the system should be properly maintained its viscosity it is useless at normal concentration because a low concentration remains in water here phase volume ratio is important when a preservative is more soluble in water than in oil if you increase oil the proportion of the preservative in water is increased the contrary is true right the preservative must be unionized so as to penetrate the bacteria membrane activity of weak acid preservative decreases as the ph of aqueous phase raises the preservative must be free not bound to other components of preservative for example phenols hydrogen based with oxyethylene group of non ionic agents for example twin 20 the agent should be non toxic these are the properties of a preservative that should be first one is it should be non toxic non irritating it should be bactericidal and bacteriostatic also it should be rapid in action it should uh, it should provide its action very fast broad spec it should be broad spectrum and it should not attached by microorganism for example pseudomonas are uh, um, uh, and attacking phenol act even in large of bacteria the efficacy of a particular preservative is also influenced by emulsion type nutritive value of a product and degree of the uh, degree of a reaction that should be uh prepared uh, that should be preserved okay so the this is uh, very important now and uh, the most important question is what are the examples of preservative that will come in mcqs of in many examination so please note down what are the examples of preservative what are the examples of preservative include sodium benzoate pabba sorbic acid uh, chlor uh, chlorcrisol chloramphenicol chlorphenol mercurial soaps and salicylic acid these are the main examples of preservative so please remember this there will be instability in emulsion this instability of emulsion can be due to flocculation creaming or sedimentation os wall brightening or coalescence or the other uh, method will be phase inversion by these can be uh, separation of two phase of this biphasic system and deterioration can occur so these are the instability of emulsion which could be limited because we want no unstable emulsion we want a stable emulsion so in sedimentation what will occur the uh, the droplets are um, get below and uh, settled below uh, in a beaker or a bottle in which the emulsion is poured or preserved right in flocculation the um, the molecule or the dispersed particles will make flocks right and in oswald ripening they will make 
लार्ज मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ ईच अदर राइट एंड इन कॉल असेंस दे कम क्लोजर टू ईच अदर एंड इन फेज इन वर्जन द ऑयल इन वॉटर बिकम्स वॉटर इन ऑयल फेज इन इनवर्टेड सो दिस इज कॉल्ड फेज इन वर्जन राइट now in creaming they form a cream like structure and they get upper uh, they get at upper side of the uh, bottle or in the, that container which they are stored and make a film over there that is called as in uh, creaming and these all the steps are uh, instability of emulsion and that can be ask in any examination that what are the instability of emulsion uh, so these are the instability first one is creaming sedimentation flocculation or fall ripening coalescence and phase inversion okay so that's it for this lecture thank you so much for being here and if you have any queries please let me know please note uh, important question which i described in uh, in this lecture and please make short note about this so thank you so much